Hello, uh, I'm Jiang Wang. I'm from Singapore. I'm going to give a short talk on chemically bonded 3D porous network of uh, black phosphorus mixing, which can offer high volume and stable capacitive energy storage. This work has been done mainly. To start with, I would like to mention energy storage is so important for the electrical transport for electrical vehicles. Electric vehicles are coming in by 2040. All the engine cars will be replaced by electrical vehicle. But if we are going to look at this situation for batteries for energy storage, lithium ion is still the working house. Although the others are coming in very slowly, but it will take time. On the other hand, we still need the better powerful supercapacitors, especially with high volume energy density. Then the question is, how are we going to make them? For, for example, for the supercapacitors with high volume energy density. So uh, my talk today uh, is on the high volume performance energy storage devices. Also, uh, in addition to electric vehicles, we also have a various flexible variable devices are coming in. So if you go to the literature, you see lots of beautiful images. Uh, so in, in order to make them working, we really need to have uh, the power source with a uh, high volume metric performance. We only have a small space of volume for them. On the other hand, they must be flexible in order uh, for them to be variable, to be portable. So therefore, the high volume performance and the mechanical flexibilities must be combined together. For supercapacitors or batteries, we want them to store as much energy as possible within a limited space, namely high volume metric capacitance or capacity. So if we look at the traditional Reagan diagram, so if we compare the measurement by mass and by volume, we can have a very different stories. So therefore, the key factor is, in order to have a high volume energy density, either for batteries or supercapacitors, we need a electrode material which should be porous and at the same time, they must be dense enough. So this is the basic requirement in order to obtain a high volumetric performance for energy storage devices. I just give you one example here, which was done by Ya Ting uh, in my research group several years ago. What she did was we can make use of the graphene. So you can see the graphene layer here. At the same time, we are going to insert the iron oxide nanoparticles in, into the space between the layer. So therefore, we have the combination of the graphene and the, the oxide here in order to have a better capacitive performance for the supercapacitors because the oxide can offer the pseudo capacitance on top of what it is doing by the graphene layers. So this is a good idea here. But on the other hand, we did have the big challenge, how we can insert the particles or clusters in. At the same time, we should control, we have a better package between the layer here. So if you look at it very carefully here, we still have a lot of space between the layer. So this is not good for the volume metric performance, although they do not impact on the mass performance for the energy storage. 
So now I come to uh, our work here. I, I'm going to just briefly introduce two pieces of work which we, we have done recently. The first one is the black uh, phosphorus with mixing nanocomposite. Our idea here is we are not going to use the electrostatic process to bond them together, but we are going to bond them together with some stronger chemical bond in order to make the material to have a better performance approaching the commercial level capacitive energy storage. So the flow chart uh, to make the material is rather straightforward. We have a make scene. We do the etching by, uh, et uh, by hydrochloride acid. We make the crumbled layer of the make scene. Then we are going to glue the black uh, phosphorus face on the surface of the make scene layer here. So in such a way, we can develop a strong bond between the two different layer structures. The bonding between them is the metal oxygen phosphorus here. So therefore, if we are going to control the processing condition properly, we are able to form a chemical bond between the two phases here. We have a K-cross you know, such nanocomposite with a strong chemical bond. So what you can see, you can see the morphology from uh, the SEM image. You can see the layer structure of the make scene. At the same time, you can also see the other face here. So we have the combination between the two different 2D materials. One is the carbide, the other one is phosphorus. So we can confirm we have a both of them. More importantly, we can confirm we have the chemical bonding between the two phases here. We have also characterized the structure, also the bonding of the two materials in the nanocomposites by different techniques such as XPS, Xon, also XF here. So again, as I said, we needed to have uh, the both phases. More importantly, we have uh, the two phases which are chemically bound together by the metal oxygen phosphorus bond here. So they can be uh, verified by the various spectromic study here. So if we can control the process, the structure properly, we can get a rather high energy density in terms of the volume performance, in terms of the like energy density and the power density, if we are going to apply such a nanocomposite into the supercapacitors. So this is a really very encouraging result. So by controlling the package of the two 2D materials by forming a strong chemical bond, we can improve the volumetric performance for the supercapacitor dramatically. The next work I'm going to mention very quickly is the combination between a 2D material and a 1D material. The idea is we can stitch the 2D materials by the 1D material, such as carbon nanotube, in order to have a stable 2D structure. So if we are going to stitch them together, effectively we are going to have a 3D structure. So this is our idea. I'm going to show you some results very quickly. We make use of the carbon nanotube fibers. We can do the electrochemical activation to change the surface. Then we are going to grow the 2D material, such as the 
zinc, vanadium oxide, the 2D nanosheet, together with the carbon nanotube here. So effectively, we are going to form a structure in such a way the 1D carbon nanotubes are going to stitch, are going to hold the 2D zinc vanadium oxide together. So they, you, what you can see, you can verify the such a stitched structure here if we are going to examine them by SEM or TM. We can also verify the faces of the 2D material and also the 1D material by different techniques. If we are going to do the measurement, the measurement is much performed, is much improved by the combination of the 1D material and the 2D material. So effectively, if we are going to stitch the 2D materials by the 1D material, we can have a more robust, stronger 3D structure in such a way we can improve the performance in the energy storage. So if we are going to make the material as the fiber shaped, uh, like the zinc ion battery, so what you can see, we can improve the performance dramatically if we are going to measure them by different parameters. So if we are going to examine you know, such a zinc ion battery uh, from the perspectives of different parameters, all the parameters, they are improved by the combination of the 1D and the 2D material. So if I'm going to give you a summary on the second example uh, by stitching the 2D material with 1D material together, we can improve the performance uh, in the zinc ion battery. So we have uh, the open framework structure from the 2D material. We have enough intercalation spacing by the 2D structure we have a high ionic conductivity. We have a highly stable structure. So at the same time, if we are going to stitch them together, we are going to form a charge conduction highway. We are going to have a direct electric contact with the substrate to enhance the transport process. So therefore, we can enhance the charge conductivity or electronic conductivity, at the same time, we have the better mechanical robustness. So if we are going to make the fiber-shaped battery, we have the flexibility from the fiber shape. We have the conductivity collection by the fibers we are going to have a fast electron transport or kinetics. So we also have we also have the improvement in the hydro felicity of the overall structure by combining the 2D materials and the 1D material together. So I just give you uh, some of the examples on how we can get high volumetric energy storage. Two examples, one is by the supercapacitor, the other one by the battery. We can make use of the typical molecular 2D materials, such as graphene, mixing. We can make them. At the same time, we need to consider how are we going to package them together to form a relatively dense structure. So therefore, we are going to have a high volumetric performance. The same applies the 2D morphological materials. So in order to make them better performing as electrode in supercapacitors, in batteries, we really need to consider how are we going to package them together, stitch them together 
in order to get a high volume performance by the material in the devices.